part two of uh, chronic kidney disease collaborative care the overall goals of the CKD therapy are to preserve the existing kidney function to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease to prevent complications and to provide for the patient's comfort for many patients early recognition diagnosis and treatment can delay the progression of kidney disease detecting and treating reversible causes of kidney failure example heart failure dehydration infections nephrotoxins urinary tract obst obstructions glomerular nephritis and renal artery stenosis treatment for stages from 1 through 4 include the control of hypertension hyperparathyroid disease anemia hyperglycemia and dyslipidemia drug therapy so the treatment for hyperkalemia strategies to decrease potassium levels include d50 with regular insulin calcium gluconate sodium bicarbonate and polyesterine sulfonate or kx -late. loop diuretics can also result in hypokalemia the progression of CKD can be delayed by controlling hypertension. Treatment for hypertension includes weight loss if obese, lifestyle changes including exercises, avoiding alcohol, smoking cessation, and reducing stress. Calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor or ARBs are used to control hypertension. Interventions for mineral and bone dysfunction disorders include limiting dietary phosphorus, administering phosphate binders, supplementing vitamin D, and controlling hyperparathyroidism. Phosphate binders include aluminum and calcium-based agents. If there is evidence of calcium deposits and vascular calcifications, then non-calcium-based phosphate binders like lanthanum carbonate or phosphorenol and sevelmer carbonate or ranvella is used. Phosphate binders are administered with food. Constipation is a frequent side effect. Sinacalcet or Sensipar is a calcium mimetic agent and increase the sensitivity of the calcium receptors in the parathyroid glands. As a result, parathyroid glands detect calcium at lower serum levels and decrease parathyroid secretion. Bone biopsy will help to determine the type of bone disorder. Exogenous erythropoietin or EPO is used in the treatment of anemia. Epoetin alpha or epogen and procrit and darbipoietin, which is a longer acting agent, is used for anemia. Higher doses of EPO can cause thromboembolic events and increased risk of death from serious cardiovascular events. Uncontrolled hypertension is a contraindication for this treatment. Iron deficiency can occur with EPO. Therefore, patients will need iron therapy with sucrose venifer and also patients on dialysis will also need folic acid because it is water, water soluble and can get dialyzed. Statins or atorvastatin is used to lower lipid and cholesterol levels. Fibrates like gemfibrosal or lopid is used to decrease triglyceride level and to increase HDL levels. Many drugs are partially or totally excreted by the kidneys. Delayed and decreased elimination needs to an accumulation of drugs and the potential for toxicity. Some of the drugs that have to be closely monitored include digoxin, diabetic agents like metformin and glyburide, antibiotics like vancomycin, gentamicin, digitalis, vancomycin and, and gentamicin, digitalis and opioid me medications nutritional therapy calorie protein malnutrition is a potential and serious problem that re results from altered metabolism anemia proteinuria anorexia and nausea for the patient who is undergoing dialysis protein is not routinely restricted for CKD stages 1 through 4, many clinicians just encourage a diet with normal protein intake. However, high protein diets and supplements are avoided to prevent overstressing the kidneys. The recommended protein intake for patients on peritoneal dialysis are 1.2 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight per day. Frequent monitoring of laboratory parameters, especially serum albumin, 
pre-albumin, which may be a better indicator for the recent or current nutrition status than albumin, and ferritin and anthropo anthropometric measurements may be necessary to evaluate nutritional status. In general, water is not restricted for those who are in stages 1 through 5 and those who are not on hemodialysis. Diuretics are used to reduce fluid retention. Patients on hemodialysis have more restriction with water intake. In general, 600 ml from insensible loss plus an equal amount of the urine output on the previous day is allowed as water intake for a patient receiving hemodialysis. Foods that are liquid at room temperature are regarded as fluid intake like gelatin and ice cream. Patients with CKD are advised to restrict sodium. Sodium restricted diets vary from 2 to 4 grams depending on the degree of edema and hypertension. Instruct the patient to avoid high sodium foods such as cured meats, pickled foods, canned soups and stews, frankfurters, cold cuts, soy sauce and salad dressings. Potassium is restricted based on the ability of the of the kidney's ability based on the kidney's ability to excrete potassium. Most salt substitutes should not be used because they contain potassium chloride. Some foods with high potassium content that should be avoided are oranges, bananas, melons, tomatoes, prunes, raisins, deep green and yellow vegetables, beans, and legumes. As kidney function deteriorates, phosphate elimination by the kidneys is diminished and phosphates should have to be eliminated. Foods that are high in phosphate include dairy products, example meat, milk, ice cream, cheese, yogurt and foods containing dairy products. Many foods that are high in proteins are also rich or high in phosphates. Some of the nursing diagnoses that can be formulated are fluid overload related to the inability of the kidneys to maintain fluid balance, potential for pulmonary edema related to fluid overload, decreased cardiac output related to reduced stroke volume, inadequate nutrition related to inability to ingest, digest or absorb nutrients, potential for infection related to skin breakdown and malnutrition, potential for injury related to effects of uh, kidney on bone density, blood clotting and drug elimination, fatigue related to nitrogenous buildup and anemia, and finally fear and anxiety related to disease progression and treatment. The overall goals are demonstrate knowledge and ability to comply with therapeutic regimen, participate in decision making, demonstrate effective coping strategies, continue with activities of daily living within physiological limitations. Nursing implementation includes health promotion and identifying individuals at risk for CKD, knowing the history of renal disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus and repeated urinary tract infections are necessary. People with diabetes need to have their urine checked for microalbuminuria if routine urinalysis result is negative for protein. Individuals identified as at risk need to take measures to prevent or delay the progression of CKD, but of even more importance, reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease.
This includes glycemic control for patients with diabetes, optimizing blood pressure control and lifestyle modifications including smoking cessations. Regular checkups when there is any and when there is any changes in the urinary appearance, frequency or volume should be reported. Acute interventions includes daily weights, daily blood pressure, identifying signs and symptoms of fluid overload, identifying signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia, strict dietary adherence, monitoring level of consciousness and vital signs, assessing for signs of infection since the patient may not demonstrate a temperature or an increased white count, assessing for dysrhythmias since a potassium level above 6 milliequivalents will cause peaked T waves and an widened QRS complex, monitoring for fluid overload, assessing lungs for crackles, monitoring for signs and symptoms of pulmonary edema, and for that Lasix is the drug of choice, also monitor for autotoxicity and um, hypokalemia while on Lasix, monitoring urine intake and output hourly in acute kidney injury, assess urinalysis for protein, hematuria, CAS, and specific gravity. Monitor weight, noting that an increase of 0.5 to 1 pound daily indicates fluid retention, monitoring bone creatinine and electrolyte values, monitoring for acidosis and treating with sodium bicarbonate if prescribed. Be alert to nephrotoxic medications such as antibiotics which may be prescribed. Monitor blood glucose levels closely for diabetic patients. Monitor patients on anticoagulant therapy closely and prepare the client for dialysis if prescribed. Once on dialysis, diuretics are not usually prescribed. Administer prescribed diet, usually a low to normal protein intake and a high carbohydrate, low potassium, low sodium, and low phosphorus diet. Avoid protein energy malnutrition or PEM in hemodialysis patients. Dietary supplements including calcium, vitamin D, iron, folic acid, water soluble vitamins are needed daily. Patients on dialysis are usually allowed moderate proteins due to protein loss during dialysis. Daily fluid allowances may be 500 to 1000 ml plus the measured urinary output from the previous 24 hours. Emotional support and availability of support services are, are play an important role. Ambulatory and home care. When conservative therapy is no longer effective, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis and transplantation are the treatment option. Patient and family need clear explanation of dialysis and transplantation. Also inform the patient that if dialysis is choos chosen, transplantation is still an option. Patient and caregiver education. Necessary dietary restriction related to protein, sodium, potassium, and phosphorus as well as fluid restrictions are explained. Patients on peritoneal dialysis are not on too much restrictions. Protein intake is 1.2 gram per kilogram ideal body weight. Ways to prevent protein energy malnutrition is to be discussed. Modifying diet and fluid intake, especially hidden sodium and potassium in salt substitutes are other easy way and other easy to prepare food like um, TV dinners usually have a high salt content. Signs and symptoms of electrolyte imbalance, especially high potassium and sodium are to be discussed. Alternative ways of reducing thirst like sucking on ice cubes, lemon or hot candy. Drugs and their side effects like phosphate binders are to be had with food. Iron supplements to be taken in between meals, etc. And importance of follow up with regard to when to see the doctor especially weight gain of more than 4 pounds, increasing blood pressure, shortness of breath, edema, increasing fatigue or weakness, and confusion or increasing lethargy. Need for support and encouragement about support groups and different types of dialysis and concerns and discussion about kidney transplantation has to be done. And evaluation, the patient with CKD will maintain fluid and electrolyte levels within normal ranges 
and an acceptable weight with no more than a 10% weight loss.